Joe, I want to talk to you a little bit uh, so you and I can help a lot of people about this thing called AM. Um, you know, that it's, it's really kind of sad because some of the new guys, they weren't around when you and I started way back in their uh, century there with AM. And, and uh, 3870 to 3890 was a gentleman's agreement since we couldn't get the FCC or the ARRL to listen. Uh, and we just all got together. Or I, this happened way back in the 50s. Uh, when I first started. And um, how is it holding up on the West Coast, Joe? Is everybody respecting that uh, that AM window from 3870 to 3890? Yeah, Bob, I, I would say uh, AM is alive and well on the West Coast. <clears throat> there was uh, initially some sideband guys who, you know, claimed it was their frequency they were there first. But gradually, the AM community built up to, uh, oh, really, usually more than, than 40 hams check in on the, on the various nets, sometimes up to 60 guys on yeah. AM. <clears throat> and uh, so... You know, good things take time, and and gradually it's just kind of where the AMers go. So now the sideband guys uh, just talk about how how crazy we are. <laughs> right. <laughs> not on <laughs> not on our frequency. <laughs> they have a well, great, one of the good they have one of the good things that. So when you and I visited the uh, W1AW some years ago, thought it'd be a good idea. And now there's an AM station uh, at W1AW. Would we uh, put a NC300 and a Viking 1 or 2 up there, right? Yeah, Viking 1, I think. I'm pretty sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or was it a yeah. Valiant? Might have been a Valiant. Been a Valiant. I, f a I forgot. Viking but Valiant. the last time sitting on uh, the actual desk of Hiram Percy uh, uh, Maxim. They have his grandson gave uh, the W1AW his desk, and that's where the gear is sitting. So when you go to W1AW, you can go in there and work AM. I, I just thought that was great, Joe. It was a great idea. Yeah. And AM is just a wonderful thing. It's not rapid fire. You kind of, uh, it's a rag chewing type of mode. And you talk technical stuff. You talk basically uh, analog electronics. And AM's a, a, a wonderful old, old mode that uh, predated sideband. AM came first for years and years and years. And uh, all this stuff is obsolete now, but it works great. It just has tubes in it, and it, it, uh, it's too heavy to lift. But that's a lot of fun. That's a lot of fun. With, that's a lot of fun with it. And uh, anybody, you know, uh, uh, anybody with any interest in in the old uh, the old tube radios, uh, check out AM or uh, contact an AMer because they're great, great Elmers. That's right, and that's what we need more of are some Elmers. And, uh, we, you know, Joe, that since you and I did that first program, we have, we have emails to prove this over the 200 shows. There's been over 1,000 people get their license because of Ham Nation. And we're so excited that these people have their license, but we hear it diamond time again, they get a little afraid because they don't have the Elmers like you and I had. And um, I, uh, I have some pictures here. I want to run down. I think Brian's got them. Uh, I, I got a, a really cool set. Check this out, Joe. I'm sure you've seen this in Kent, Ohio, yeah. is a mural. And isn't that cool? Is there any history you want to tell about that? Well, in the uh, in the seventies, uh, in Kent, Ohio, there was a little uh, music community and some clubs, all on a street called Water Street, 
And uh, a whole bunch of people came out of there. Uh, Chrissy Hines from the Pretenders uh, <clears throat> was from there, a whole bunch of us. And Water Street is kind of famous for some great bands <clears throat> that came out of it. It's a college town. And so to commemorate Water Street and uh, how important it was <clears throat> for musicians having a, a good place to play, uh, they put a mural up of me. And uh, I'm grateful. I'm grateful. One other thing I want to show you, Bob. Have a look at this. I'll see if you can see it. That's me in 1961. Uh, I was 12 years old. My novice call was WV2KAC, and that's a Heathkit DX20 that I built, and a BC348 surplus receiver. Yes. <clears throat> that's yes. me when I was 12 years old, and that's my station. WV2, Willie Victor 2KAC. I was a novice, and I just found that. So I'm really proud of it. Well, I have a picture here coming up uh, uh, with Jim. Uh, Jim and I, uh, and you. I want you to tell the story about Jim, about how you got into ham radio and how Jim helped you. And he has the log. He brought his log of your first contact. He worked, you worked him, of course. And, oh, and I uh, then brought that log to you. So uh, tell us a little story about how you got into ham radio and what uh, significance Jim had on your life. Okay, well, in about 1959, uh, my family relocated from Ohio to New York City. And I had been a country boy, grew up in Ohio. We had all kinds of fields to play in and a lot of room and... Uh, and vacant lots and uh, like that. But I wound up in New York City in a third floor apartment uh, with my parents. And I didn't know anybody because it was summer. And I didn't have any friends till school started. But that summer, I was all by myself. And it was really, uh, really, really a shock to go from Ohio and, and being part of a whole community of kids just to being a total loner. <clears throat> and so I noticed that there was this thing uh, up on the roof of the apartment building that went around uh, on Saturday mornings. And it was a, uh, it was a Mosley beam. I didn't know what it was, but I knew it went around on Saturday mornings, around, you know. And so I followed the coax down to a window of another apartment on the first floor and knocked on the door. And Jim Walden, uh, his call was W2IEY, but he was a ham radio operator. And he invited me in and showed me the wonderful world of ham radio and really saved my life because I had nothing to do and I was scared and alone. So eventually I learned the Morse code. He gave me my novice and uh, lost track of him for about 30, 40 years. And uh, when the internet came along, uh, <clears throat> I found him. And uh, he was my Elmer. And... Uh, he saved my life, uh, and I was an 11-year-old kid, and I have met uh, so many people through ham radio that I never would have met any other way. And it's been so wonderful of an enhancement for my life in general to be a ham. Uh, I, I owe him the world. And... I think uh, that that's what we need more of in this day and age. When somebody's young and uh, comes in and is interested in ham radio, 
you can do so much good to a kid. Uh, you can change his life forever for the better. And so that's my, that's my story. And uh, mm-hmm. Jim passed away about three years ago. But it was great after 30 years uh, to uh, connect with him again. And uh, he came to a concert one time and, and uh, had to use some earplugs, but he really enjoyed the show. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great, Joe. Great story.